These are some of my thoughts on the TiVo Tarantula. I chose the TiVo Tarantula over other printers, mainly for cost and the fact that it had some nice specs in that it has a practically a 7.5 inch square build volume, a heated bed, and a display with tunable controls. So during a print, you can tune the printing speed, the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature, the fan speed for cooling the print, the flow of filament, and you can even do a filament change, though I haven't found that function to work very well for me. The other thing about the TiVo Tarantula that I really have enjoyed is, though it is quite hard to follow the manual and get it assembled, once it's assembled, you start printing parts to upgrade the printer because out of the box it doesn't work very well. And so being able to print your own parts for the printer really gives a sense of it being your printer in that there is so many different models on Thingiverse for how to upgrade it that I would doubt that any two TiVo Tarantulas have ever looked exactly the same because there is such variety and so many different combinations and ways to do things and it really feels like it's your printer. Now the acrylic parts that come with the printer are brittle and can be insufficient so it is highly recommended to reprint lots of the essential parts. The essential parts that I would say every TiVo Tarantula owner must 3D print would be the Z motor mount just because of how crucial it is and how it just straightens everything up and the Z stop which just really makes it easy to set the Z height for the nozzle because without it you're always down there with an allen key trying to loosen it and move it up just a point one of a millimeter or whatever as opposed to just turning a screw to set your Z height and the of course fan duct which you mount the fan on to cool the print that's like the first thing I print and without the fan duct it's really hard to do overhangs because the filament is too hot and can just droop and they get kind of melted and warped so I highly recommend that the biggest disadvantage in my opinion to the TiVo Tarantula is the manual and setup because the manuals that I've seen have all been different with different page numbering and sometimes even the wrong picture in the wrong spot for what the words say and the words are pretty much non-existent so it's mainly you go by the pictures but because they're just 3d renderings they don't really fully give you the grasp of what needs to happen all the time and there's a lot of details that just aren't there and you need to find on YouTube videos but because the manuals are all seem to be just a little bit different the YouTube videos you watch will potentially have different page numbers for different steps that they do and have different step orders and stuff one of the manuals I saw even had permanent markered out spots where they had decided not to do something which I thought was interesting but overall if you watch a few YouTube videos and look at your manual it isn't too hard to assemble though it does take a couple hours and I found in all the ones I've assembled there seems to be a bearing wheel issue with the bed and just trying to get it perfectly smooth running but that hasn't seemed to affect negatively any of my prints and I'm very happy with the print quality especially for the price a 250 to 300 dollar printer and I'm quite fond of it and the heated bed is really nice to help the prints adhere while you're printing and come off easily when it cools down 
though I would highly recommend printing on a glass bed because I found that the factory bed just adheres too well and I've been having issues, had issues getting stuff off of it. Just even actually chipped up some of the top of it when pulling things off. So a glass bed is just, I'd pretty much say a must have. I started out just using a picture frame that was relatively the right size and then after that I upgraded to a piece of glass that I had cut from an old window. But overall I'm very impressed with the performance of this printer and just really enjoy using it. And the other thing is after having built it yourself picked the parts you wanted, printed them, and assembled them, you really know the printer well. So you're not scared to play with it and tweak things and test things. That brings me to another thing. This printer isn't just a plug and play. It is a printer that you will be constantly fiddling with and upgrading and tuning for a while before you get it to where you're really happy. My final thoughts are, this is a great printer for anyone on a budget who wants lots of good features and isn't afraid of the assembly, unless you have a friend who would like to assemble it for you. But for those who want something that just prints quickly and easily out of the box and they just want it as something to make things and not as a fun project, this would not be quite as good a printer. For me, it's working well, I've enjoyed the process, and I've learned a lot, and I love it, and would gladly recommend it to anyone who is up for a small challenge and wants a decent printer for a low cost.